Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the CHOCOBROS. I'm your host again this week, Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we're going to dive right into Kansas. Cody, talk. No, I was kidding. No, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, let's start with day one of Kansas. So, Or I guess even before day one, so prep night before day before what how, how was it uh so i actually headed up thursday after work uh i wanted to try and make it in time for the locals for uh the unfortunately event, right no for the thursday oh, local the thursday right event too mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was just like basically... their, this normal weekly i think it is the normal weekly um i missed round one uh due to some traffic issues uh so i took a round one loss uh ended up winning out the rest of that tournament Nice. Uh, made top eight, was swiftly eliminated by uh, Chris Lopez, <laughs> per usual. <laughs> the mirror? Uh, no, I was on Ice Earth, and he was okay. on... No, he was on Mono Ice. Uh, not exactly what we ran in the main event, but mm-hmm. pretty close to it. Um, yeah. Then we, me and him went and tested back at my hotel room for a couple hours. We tested all different decks. Um mm-hmm. Just to get some practice in. Uh, the next day, we met up, or I met up with uh, Craig, like uh, Craig Dobson, head judge usually at Kansas. Um, or not head judge, just the loudest judge. <laughs> <laughs> no. We we met up with him and Jonathan Gordon from Canada. Okay. Uh, and then uh, me, him, me, Craig, CJ, and Jonathan, CJ Wolf from Kansas. We all went and had breakfast together, and then basically we went back to Collector's Cache that day and just jammed games pretty much all day, um, waiting for everybody to get off work, basically. <laughs> um, and Sam Tool was up there, kind of like uh, some of like the familiar faces that we normally see at a big tournament. Right, right. They slowly started pouring in the doors. Uh, and then we had like the big like pre-tournament, which was... How many people? was... I think it was like 48 people or something like that. Oh, not bad. So yeah, it was it was a good sized tournament. They did a uh, split to top eight or a top eight uh, like auto split, mm. um, just because it would have went on forever if we would have played all night. And I ran Ice Earth in that as well. Did you top? Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I lost round one to Jonathan Gordon actually. I oh, opened. Nice. I think I opened fourth lands. And no, like <laughs> no actual play. Oh, man. Um, so, so it was a pretty rough start. So, like, I ended pitch, up pitch flan, play flan, go. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually drew a Duke Larg, but it was it still felt really bad because yeah. I don't know, it was just a horrible <laughs> start. I ended up grinding back, and we had like, actually a pretty good game afterwards. Um, we yeah, ended up winning out after that. I was pretty confident with Ice Earth. I just wanted to give Mono Ice one last like hoorah. <laughs> Is that what you say every time? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wait, hold on. I gotta look at your deck list real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still has FF six cards. Alright. Oh of course. Because <laughs> I remember you said it's the last time I'm playing FF six. Uh, it's time to move on. <laughs> oh to, god. Uh, if I had like a dollar for every time I said that. <laughs> um make but... yourself money some money. Yeah the deck actually was really good. <laughs> I really can't complain about it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, now you're playing the new Celeste instead of the old Celeste? Just one of it. Um, just to scholar it back to cancel summons. like Kind of like catch the opponent off guard. It's kind of like a little neat little play. Never pulled it off, but... The card is very good, though. Um, Do you wish you played the full three? No. no. You, you still like the old was... one more? Or were you not playing either one, really? No, I was playing two of the oh, old one, one. Okay. one of the newer one, and I was fine with those numbers. Probably, like, one of the only times I've ever ran two cards with the same name that wasn't, like, Pain, like, in mm-hmm. Windwater. Um, but, yeah, so Saturday, uh, round one, I played a guy playing Scions. Um, I've had an early Sephiroth, pretty much made him discard his whole hand and kept his Yudafros in the entire game. Um... Won that round two. Went up against Wind Water. Uh, <laughs> I had to like double Glacia his Yuri, which felt really bad. Oh man! Uh, just because I hadn't drawn the Emperor, 
Right. Uh, which is basically our best card against Yuri. And fortunately, when I made him, so I did 7k to Yuri and like doled something, did 7k again and made him discard. But uh, he ended up drawing the third Yuri. So oh, the, card I, the card I made him discard was Yuri also. So I, was, I felt good. <laughs> and then he drew the third Yuri and I was like, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> well, you said the Emperor? Uh, yeah, Ice Emperor, the uh, backup. Oh, sure, sure, okay. Yeah, just dump two cards, break anything. Right, right. I was wondering, uh, like, what card are you talking about? Like, which Emperor are you <laughs> playing? <laughs> like, you're dropping the Dark Emperor on people, like, what? No, no that one, uh, I'm trying to think of what I played after that. I think I played Mono Water for the first time after that, uh, which is a really easy matchup. It used to be difficult, but I don't know. Zolera is huge in that matchup against Zolera, like their whole field. For sure. Um, and then we did a, we had like a lunch break. Um, so pretty much everybody went down to that little sandwich shop from Collector's Cache. Right. Uh, we were just chatting. And then I came back feeling pretty good with, about the deck. I played against uh, Ice Water um, and just got absolutely crushed. <clears throat> he played a turn one snow. And I was like, okay, maybe it's like the mirror match. And then he went like Agrius <laughs> into Renoa the Agrius. And I was like, okay, like the six drop Agrius. Oh, jeez. And then it, it became like a deep brown soldier deck. I was like, I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> but basically, I couldn't play enough forwards to keep up with how many of mine were going to be doled. Right, right. Uh, oh, so so he, I lost... that, that player didn't top things. I'm looking for that list and I don't see it. No, no, no. Um, okay. But yeah, he, he crushed me pretty quick. I, did, I think I hit Solera into damage. And that was pretty much all <laughs> all that game was. It was Jeez. over after that. Um, so then I was 2-2, two and two and I was basically, really, I had to win out uh, from there on. I'm trying to remember. Did you need an X and 2 record? I guess with 128 people, that's... Yeah, there was only like a few X3s that made it. I think if we would have had another round of Swiss, then more X3s would have been in there. But I think we were one person short of getting the extra <laughs> round. I think it had to be 129 to get the extra round or something like that. <laughs> That's weird. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what I played in the round following. I think it was actually another Mono Water player. Um, that was actually a much closer game than the first Mono Water match. Um, but once again, Zolera is huge in that matchup. Vayne keeps like their big guys like Cloud of Darkness and Lena doled down. Right. Uh, managed to win that game. And then I went up against Icewater once again. This was like a more traditional build. Um, and it was a very back and forth game. I had a clutch, like Kuja EX for like the fifth or sixth point of damage, which ended up pretty much saving me that game. Did you, so you won that yeah. one? Yeah, and then I top deck Vayne, which stole oh, his geez. last guy. Yeah. And then had Snow, so. And that one I was a little bit nervous in. Mostly because we were running low on time and I was behind. Um, right, yeah. And of course, you know how it is. Like whenever you're in a match, and everybody else is finished, they're all like pooling around you guys. Yep. <laughs> I'll watch yeah, so, you go. Yeah. So I was pretty much like like Sam was sitting down right by us. All my local friends were watching. I was like, all right, I gotta win this game. <laughs> <laughs> Can't look like so, a pool. Yeah, ended up winning that one. So then it was four two, basically just winning in. Uh, I played against Earth, Wind, Fire. Like, basically, Earth, Wind with Phoenix, Splash. Okay. And that matchup's pretty easy. I'm a, I've gotten so used to it over, like, I guess since the last Crystal Cup, i played it so many times, so. Well, that's a Dynaluma deck, so, so you're saying the Dynaluma ban might not be needed? No, it definitely is needed. <laughs> <laughs> that card can just go. Um, <laughs> but now I hit him with an early Sephiroth. Um, yeah, that's always brutal for that deck. It's like, if yeah. you catch them at the wrong time, well, the right time for you, the wrong time for them, it, oh, it's so brutal. Yeah, I was basically just like, how many cards you got in hand? He's like, two. I was like, all right, cool. Sephiroth time. <laughs> and then from then on, it was just discarding one card pretty much every turn at least, or dull freezing his field. And he never really got enough momentum. Um, he hit a Star Sibyl EX, search for the Shantoto, never had enough CP to play it. Mm. So I managed to win that game and uh, basically get in there for top 32. 
made there it to day go. two. So. And how was your day two? Oh wait, so wait, uh, so you made day two. <laughs> so, draft right. Mm-hmm. So it was split into pods of eight, is my understanding, or was mm-hmm. it six? Oh, eight. Okay, and then you played cross pod after drafting within a pod, right? You played one match in your pod. Okay. And then after that, it it Just was any. I think it was, well, I didn't play in anybody else in my pod, so I guess it was cross pod after that. And there were three or four rounds? Four rounds. Four rounds, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so anyway, talk about it. I just want to understand and make sure the I got the format down in my brain. Yeah, so in my pod, <clears throat> the pods weren't set up the way I thought they were. I thought it'd be like one through eight were in a pod, and then... Oh, no, no way. But I had I had no idea what I was doing, basically. I, say, I don't think so... one through eight, because then you knock out all the people who are top of the day one Swiss... Because they knock each other out. Oh, I guess if it's cross pod, that's not true. Yeah. They play against each other once. But, I mean, if they lose that many games, I mean, they're going to be out regardless. Yeah. Um, so, in my pod, we had Brian Berkeley, Steven Arboleta, uh, my buddy Osby from my local scene, uh, Jeremiah Tonius, mm-hmm. the Mono Lightning guy from Worlds and all that stuff. And then... Uh, Miles Teller, he was right next to me in my pod. Just a lo- I mean, every pod was pretty much stacked with, like, well-known players. Yeah, there's not too many names on these lists that I don't recognize. Yeah. Yeah, so it was pretty stacked. I was mainly going in, going to try and draft Fire Ice. Um, ice I'm obviously comfortable with. And, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of good EX bursts in those two, in, like, the two colors. It's good EX bursts uh, plus, like, Having Celeste plus like Edgar and other things like that, I can imagine being very good in a draft setting, especially Celeste like getting through to six points of damage instead of seven, it's significantly better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I ended up um, my first pack. I opened up. I had a legendary Fina, like the Wind Fina. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my best card, pretty much in the deck. So I went ahead and went with that. I was like, all right, well maybe I can go like Earth Wind or Wind X something. Uh, and then from then on, I think my next pack might have been Archangel. It was either Archangel or Rain. And uh, then that's when I started going fire. Um, so basically the Fina was my only wind card for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of like my third element that I would do for like a backup. Uh, and I could tell that the table was kind of... There was definitely more than one person going for Fire Ice. Yeah. Little did I know it was Miles right next to me. <laughs> um, but towards, like, the later packs, like, if you force an element, like, the entire time, you can tell, like, when people start giving up on it. Because mm-hmm. it felt like more like Fire and Ice cards. I was starting to get, like, Celeste and Umaro. Um Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Brian Berkeley was taking all of the lightning cards. Like, every <laughs> single <laughs> lightning card. <laughs> Yeah, I saw his another... deck in that thread. It was all lightning. It was literally model yeah. lightning draft. Yeah, model lightning draft. Yeah, which I knew somebody was. I just figured it was uh, Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. I figured it was him because he's known for model lightning. Because uh, I had only seen like one dragoon come to me in the packs, and I was like, "Well, I'm not just gonna take one." <laughs> I was already like, probably it was probably like the fourth pack by the time I saw it. Yeah, and especially if you try to hate draft within a pod like that, and then you're going to play cross pod, it just doesn't, there is no yeah, it was, drafting really. Yeah, so. no, yeah, I mean, people can, but I think it's you only hate draft if there's not something like on your colors that you're looking for. Right. So like I got like a water astrologen at one point, and there was no wind, ice, or wa- fire cards. So I just took that because that's a good forward. And, mm-hmm. Like if you draft water. Um, but yeah. I got a light rain in my last pack, so I felt really good. I had three fire rain, one light rain. Oh, wow, Lazaro. so you could actually do the special at some point. Yeah, like yeah. Mega four and... Oof. Yeah, if he didn't get death gazed every single time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I felt pretty good about my draft deck. I wish I had some more boss monsters. Uh, I didn't have like an Archangel GK. My like highest forward was Umaro. And, and he's kind of stupid sometimes. Yeah, he's, a, definitely like a, <laughs> like... he's definitely like a double-edged sword because he's a 9k that you can never block with, essentially. Yeah, um, except that first turn. Yeah. And so, round one, they told us we had to play the person diagonal from us, which was Steven. 
Um, we'd done a test draft the night before. Steven was in that test draft with me. Uh, we fought for Fire Ice in that one. And I could have sworn it was him taking most of the Fire Ice cards, which I think he was at the beginning, and then he had Audible off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually audibled into Earthwind, which was pretty scary to go against. He actually ended up having Arden, Aerith, and Noct in his uh Wow. In his build. <laughs> Noct actually <laughs> seems pretty nuts in draft because he's just Yeah. <laughs> very consistent removal. Yeah, I think I had to Shiva him or I hit a Shiva on EX burst to get rid of him. No, I definitely Shiva him like from hand. Uh but yeah, once I got around that, Steven swung his Aerith into my Aroha, which I'm completely fine taking that trade because then Sabin can ping and rain can ping, and everything else can like basically do the pinging effects I want to do. Right. Uh, and then he slapped down Arden. <laughs> um, <laughs> but by then, I had had enough like characters in play, like backups wise, where I could sack for Arden pretty much every turn. Mm -hmm. So I ended up winning that game. Felt pretty good, 1-0. Uh, and then round two, I went up against Lopez, <laughs> <laughs> and. I think my only forward I saw for it, what seemed like forever was just Umaro. Oh, jeez. So I was getting like one point of damage in, and he was getting two in. Uh, I didn't play like the best game, but I didn't have forward, so right. it wasn't very close. And then at the end, he slapped down on Arden as well. So <laughs> jeez. the game was well over before that even entered play. Um, so yeah, I lost that one. Uh, round three, I played against Andrew Nelson. Um, I had played against him once at Nationals before. Um, and we had a pretty back-and-forth game. Uh, I got lucky when he swung his Archangel HM into mine. I hit two Bryn Hilders. Whew. So I was able to take care of that. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, it came down to a turn where I guess I got a little greedy and I swung out. And I knew he had to have a fire forward, something to haste it. Or he had to have a I knew he had Sage in hand, because I had saw it. Mm -hmm. so I was like, alright, so if he draws a Fire Forward, has another card to play the Sage, and then has the Wind card to protect his other Archangel, like the uh, the Wind one that can't be chosen, then I was dead. And he had all of that. So <laughs> <laughs> I think he played he played March as the Fire Forward, so I knew he had the Fire CB for Sage, and I was like, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I was pretty much eliminated at that point. Uh... After that, I played against the guy that goes by White Mage. Mm -hmm. I don't know his actual name. I've seen him at a couple tournaments, uh, right. but he always has like the White Mage garb on. Right. Uh, and by then, I was pretty much just like burnt out. I didn't <laughs> want to play anymore, <laughs> so he completely just crushed me. And I was like, "All right, cool. I can leave now." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so you didn't not stick a... around to watch the top cut or anything? No, I saw the. I we kind of had it spoiled that Lopez had made top eight. So I was happy for him, and then mm -hmm. I pretty yeah. much headed home. Yeah, yeah. and just listened, uh, like, on YouTube. I guess it is a car. Sunday, and, like, you live a decent distance away, so. Yeah. Wanted to be able to make it home at, like, a decent time, so. So but overall, all was... yeah, oh. oh, sorry. What was I saying? No, all in all, it's a really good time. I'm not a big fan of draft at all. Um, I was about to ask you, I said, overall, how yeah. did the draft end up feeling? I know that, like, being a fan of it or not, uh, like, was, was the extra pack helpful, or... I mean, it has to be helpful, I guess, but... Uh, like, how did it feel being there in the pods? And You mean, like, the extra pack, or just the yeah, draft so in the general? extra pack, how did the draft feel? Like, was it does it feel fairly balanced, or is it very, like, super-duper luck-dependent? Because I think... Like, yeah, Arden's kind of a house, but, like, for the most part, it seems very you can kind of make your own luck like as long as you draft well you can play fairly well like practice actually pays off it's not just like oh well, you have to get lucky and open a certain card in your pack otherwise you lose no yeah i don't think it's i mean obviously there's variance in it mm -hmm. um the whole extra pack thing i don't really have much experience with draft outside of like opus two so <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since i drafted um and i wouldn't practice for something like that um I don't know. It's just not something I'm really into, like opening packs and drafting. Um, 
I think it was fine. I think if we continue to have it in Crystal Cups, those will be the Crystal Cups I don't attend. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know some people might say, oh, well, that's because you did bad. Like, if you did good, you would have enjoyed it. Like, no. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> like, I play Constructed 100% of the time, three right. nights a week. Like, I want to play Constructed at every event I go to. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> All in all, Kansas was awesome as usual. Everybody was great out there. We took over another Holiday Inn, per usual, to practice drafting in. Um, nice, nice. So. Uh, so yeah, did you do practice drafts the night before day two? Yeah, we uh, we all went out to uh, Mongolian barbecue, which is probably like one of the best meals I've ever had. So that's pretty good. Highly suggest that to everybody out there. So yeah, <laughs> you have a Mongolian place like 15 minutes up the road. I haven't been. To yeah, it, it was awesome. Um, so we got to go out as me, Sam, Alejandro, RB, Oki, Brian, pretty much everybody. Um, and then we all, we were looking for a place to draft, so I volunteered to call the Holiday Inn Express and <laughs> take over their uh, <laughs> their little, like, I guess, breakfast area where people eat in the morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We all, so, I think we all had a pretty good time. So uh, congratulations, by the way, to Sam Tool. Uh, if he tunes in, if not, still, congratulations. Uh, and then also yeah, yeah. congrats to uh, Matt Okimoto, Sergio Garcia, and Brian Berkeley. They all qualified. Uh, none of those were passed down, right? Like nobody was already qualified? Uh, Oki was already qualified. Oh, was Sam he? Tool, and Sam was already qualified. Oh, okay. Uh, so it actually passed down to Jack Foltz, Lynch, and Chris Lopez? <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Uh, no, Lopez had his invite, too. Um, oh, so, that, geez. Okay, so Brian... Garrity or Garotti? Yes. Yeah, he got his invite. Jack, so I know seven Jack of the his. top eight are qualified. That's pretty sweet. I believe so. I think Andrew Nelson might be the only one who didn't get it passed down to, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Oh, uh, which he's a very good player. Um, so I, I have no doubt that he'll get his invite. I know they had like 26 people come down from Minnesota, which was insane. Um, yeah, 128 people is a lot. That's, yeah. I think that's the largest non-nationals event ever in the U.S., right? Uh, probably, something like that. Something yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't think of a single event that would have been bigger. I mean, I guess the fanfare, you, maybe? Or like all of Gen Con last year, maybe? Like if you combine it all, uh, I think. Yeah, something like that. That's why, yeah, a single event, though. But like I was saying, we had 26 people come down from Minnesota, so that was just insane <clears> to me. Oh, yeah like a seven or eight hour drive so that's like yeah that was like my atlanta drive for that one yeah. lq Oof. it's definitely yeah. a heck of a drive it's probably a lot better with people in your car though because <laughs> <laughs> that i just had a lot of yeah. podcasts and stuff to listen to so it was good but man oh man it's definitely a stressful stressful time but yeah uh, so i got to meet a lot of new people um and then a lot of familiar faces were there too so so how'd you feel about the meta there? Was it did it seem like one deck was super uh, kind of present, or I mean, based off the top thirty-two, it looks fairly what you'd expect and just all over the place, honestly. Uh, like nothing's too. I guess there's a lot more Earth Wind than anything else, maybe. Yeah, which I kind of expected that. Um, all I played against was like the typical deck, so nothing really caught me off guard. Um, maybe Ice Water caught me off guard just because I don't like that matchup too much. Um, Plus, you played against the Agrius version, which is not as common these days. Yeah, which that was totally off the wall. I definitely <laughs> didn't expect that at all. Um, the regular Ice Water, which I played in, uh, in round six, that one I could, I can anticipate for that. Mm. Um, and I ended up winning that match. So the Mono Water matchups, I. Figured we're coming eventually. Um, those are basically, not to be like rude or anything, but those are like free wins in a, against a nice deck. Yeah. For the most part. Unless they're playing like old stuff like Clady and Steiner. Um, <laughs> well, that's like, uh, like when I was playing the mill deck, the, I felt the same way. Like I was a little more crude about the way I described the matchup. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was just a complete well, like smash. Like it, it's not even... Like I'd have to draw no backups and never... Like, I'd have to never hit Yuna, ever, which means also never hitting Pain. And, yeah, no, that, that matchup's incredible for that deck. Yeah. 
And Mono Water is still like a very good deck. It's just against right, ice. Right, which is like it's yeah. funny because a lot of people, I, I know a lot of people like playing Earth Wind into Water because uh, you get to if they're playing Riku now, you just kind of ping down their Vikings repeatedly, make them draw a lot of cards, mill them out, and you just that's how you play the matchup, and you almost just never attack. Uh, right. So it's interesting that a lot of these decks, and like you're saying, playing an ice variant is very favorable. Uh, I don't know how ice earth and like ice fire match up, but I'd have to imagine similarly. Maybe not ice fire as much because they can get shut down a little easier. Yeah, but, ice earth is like a, an absolute free win. <laughs> it's almost like not even a game. Because um, it's very interesting how those are all the big decks, but mono water still puts up results. Oh well, yeah, saying, so. and Mono Water can still beat Earth Wind. Um, I know we saw that with Colin against Oki in Toronto. Um, I think it just depends on like who's piloting the deck, and obviously like draws and all that variant. I guess playstyle, but... yeah. If you don't adjust at the right times, like if you wait one too many turns to start milling, kind of thing, you might you know lose by a card. <laughs> I've seen that happen before. Yeah, I think uh, some decks that I saw that I didn't expect. Uh, I didn't play against them, but like there's quite a bit of mono wind. Mm -hmm. uh, I know like Oki and Steven were on that, um, and then a lot of ice wind as well. Mm -hmm. I also see two Earth Fire decks in the top eleven decks. So eleventh place and fourth place out of Swiss were uh, Fire Earth seven decks. Mm -hmm. which is, yeah, I, that's after cool. I won, I think it was after I won like maybe round three. I kind of like just walked up towards like the top tables. And it was like FF7 everywhere. <laughs> I was like, huh. I'm, I'm okay with that matchup. But... Maybe that's how I spike my LQ. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking of my LQ coming up this weekend, uh, I, I'm gonna, I have a task for you. Oh, okay. It, you can go in, in as much depth as you want, preferably depth, but you know, <laughs> maybe not. Convince me to play Mono Ice... Or a super ice centric deck. Why? What? Why all the matchups are good? What matchups are bad? And why that doesn't matter? Et cetera, et cetera. Ooh, a super ice centric deck. Yeah. Um, so either mono ice, ice earth, uh, could be convinced ice water of some variant. Yeah, I'm not too experienced with ice water, and I think that deck is just. Eh, I think it's okay. <laughs> so we'll say I would say go ice earth. Okay. Um, and why? Not only because you were surrounded by it at the last LQ, <laughs> um, but the deck's just very good. Um, being able to search for the Sephiroth special is huge. Um, most ice decks have no way of doing that unless they play your sail. Um, you can play. You can alter quite a few cards. Like you see some builds with like Garland, where it's a lot more controlly than like. Where your regular like discard and Dolan freeze decks. Mm -hmm. um, the Flan engine is basically like just free CP, and then you dump their whole hand and sit all steam, and the game's pretty much over at that point. Um, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> pretty just self-explanatory. The Emperor breaks every card in the game, so that's true. Yeah, if you have any issue on the field, like. A lot of people will play Yuri and goof up and dull him. And as mm -hmm. soon as he's dull, like, it doesn't matter what you draw, just discard it. Break that, and it's gone. Uh, the win water matchup is heavily favored towards you, and that deck's very popular right now. Um, mono water is, like I said, it's pretty much a free win. Um, now, what cards in the matchup make it, make it a, such a free win uh, in terms of Against uh, Zalera usually is huge. Uh, against Windwater, they can have Yastola. Um, because like I'm looking at uh the Ice Earth deck list from the top 32 Azul's list, and he doesn't actually play Zalera at all. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> he has three Glacia, three of each Flan, and then just backups and forwards. And he's playing Nidhogg, which. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you can obviously play Nidhogg or Veritas. Uh, some people play both, which I, I don't. Now, some people are playing like Cam Chaos and then like a Galdas and a Nidhogg or like and a Veritas or whatever. It's yeah, I'm, I'm in. Com <laughs> I complete dis completely disagree with that. As few <laughs> dark cards as possible, uh, and that goes for all Iceless. Um, 
I'm just looking over his list now, so just give me one second. Yeah, this is very similar to what I would have played. Um, I actually ended up cutting Laswell. And okay, so I also play Orphan in my build, uh, just because that's huge. Yeah, true. Um, but you can mess around with the numbers. Levi, it looks like, was the one who played like one copy of Solera. And oh, okay. Like, lost it for it. Yeah, and I always. Also Galdus and an Idhog. Yeah, if you're playing a mono ice deck or any ice X deck, and you're not playing Zalera, you're doing it completely wrong. <laughs> um, it's the best ice summon in the game. And it's not even close. Like <laughs> the card is just insane. Um, but yeah, you just have a lot of good matchups. The Wind Earth, um, you just make them discard. If things get too out of hand, you Shantoto. Um, if you're going against anything aggro-y, uh, like Scions or Fire Ice, same thing. Just try to try to survive so you can Shantoto. <laughs> um, a lot of the Scions decks will discard their whole hand on their own. Um, so Sid Alstein can actually hit in the EX burst in that matchup. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they hold cards, then yeah, you punish them by making them discard their cards, and then they don't have yeah. as much gas. So. Which, that. and if you have like a Flan on board, people play horribly around it. <laughs> like they'll be like, oh, he's going to make me discard my cards. I should discard my cards. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Go for it. Um, and then you punish them with Sid Alstein. If you Sid Alstein and Renoa... In the same turn, the game's over. Um, I know this weekend I played against Fire Water, which I hadn't had too much practice against. Uh, I played against Patrick in the Thursday tournament. Uh, Zalera hits almost all of his forwards, so that matchup is pretty one-sided. There's occasional Water Fire down here, too. Like I think there was one guy from Orlando maybe playing it, and then we have a local that occasionally plays it. Yeah, and I think that's a very cool deck. Um I don't think it's top tier by any means. Um, There's a couple different builds, too. Like, I think the FF9 list is probably better than, like, the Zidane aggro. Mm -hmm. But, oh, man, both of those decks are really sweet. They have a lot of cool yeah. cards that, like, you don't see often, but then you have them played. It's like, oh, man, like that VV. Whew. Love that new yeah, one CP VV. I think I Zalared him for three or four forwards. It was, like, Zidane, Lease, Knight, and something else. Um, so that always feels great. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, and then, I don't know. I think Ice Faith is just in a very good spot. I would almost argue that it's the best deck. I think Earthwind obviously has more tops than it, which I know you're very comfortable playing Earthwind. If you want to spike an LQ, I think Ice Earth is the move. Um, now watch, all, all LQs will just be full of Ice Earth. <laughs> so, oh, they all just are. Get... Like, everybody's playing yeah. Ice. Everybody's... So, like, you could try to build a deck to beat it, but yeah, I don't know. I don't probably audibling to a nice deck although this deck's it, pretty sweet in the top 32 and 31st place the uh moogle deck with two scale toe luminous puma kektor dataluma gilgamesh last well oh this deck's sweet who is the player is uh it? it is uh gutau or gutau okay i'm clicking on it now i, I i'm sorry yeah, see this looks this game. looks like it takes way too much skill for my uh my skill level here <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it is sweet. That needs sweet. to be a Choco a Brew video. We have to pull all these decks out and force you to play it for like three hours on like stream or something oh, and record gosh. you letting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... It seems pretty good, though. I mean, it's, it's uh, Earthwind with a different backup line. Almost as consistent, but not quite. And then just a greedy-ass forward line <laughs> to try to win. And monsters, to be fair. It's pretty interesting. I mean, you play three Zidane. It's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> True. Seems good enough to me. Also, the 2CP no-no seems pretty good against ice decks. Activate five forwards. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I was starting to spark a comeback against the Wind-Water match, and then he hit Bart's and EX, and it just ruined my whole play. And I was dead the next turn, so. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I think Ice Earth is in a very good position. I actually expected a lot more of it, which maybe there was, and I just wasn't going up against it. I think it was good to give Mono Ice <laughs> FF6 its last little send-off. Oh, stop <laughs> saying the last send-off. It's never happening. I know, right? I'll probably play it at Locals tomorrow. Yep, will. <laughs> <laughs> I think... So no other, no other uh, convincing arguments for me to go straight to Ice and never look back? I mean, I don't know what's been stopping you. The deck has been <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> 
Uh, it's just the a lot of times, like yeah, I I agree that Ice Earth is probably at least if it's not the best deck, it's got to be top two or you know, it's a definitely a top three, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of best deck, probably, but it depends on the build a little bit, and you have to get a little lucky with the meta, like how good Scale Toad is if you're playing Scale Toad, or uh, how the problem is how you sequence, right? Like. That deck can also brick harder than most other decks. Like, if you nice. open up very poorly, like, it's really hard to come back sometimes, especially in a meta full of ice. So if the other deck opens better than you, Sephiroth's you, and then you have no way to come back, then it's just a stomp. That's true, um, but, I mean, Earthwind's playing, like, five colors right now, so... <laughs> they can also brick pretty hard. Yeah, um, but they get stuff back from the break zone a lot more readily, and they also have ways to recur and search backups, and, like... Ice Earth does have those search mechanics where they can find, you know, they have the um, Gastelion Emperor and Sid. Some play Sail. I probably wouldn't play that, but they have Jesse. But none of it really gets anything back, and it doesn't search for backups. So that's a definitely a difference. Yeah, outside of, like, Minfilia. And then if you play Miner, which mm -hmm. I don't, but... Um, but yeah, the deck, obviously, I bricked hard drawing four flans. Uh, <laughs> just don't do that. Like... <laughs> As long as you don't do that. Don't draw a fourth line, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just open Harley Edward, and you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's another big thing. Is like Edward is, I think, pretty huge this format. Uh, we're seeing a lot of big summons. Uh, which, I mean, nothing that's like, too shocking. It's usually just Diabolos and Phoenix. But they're still um, big summons. Like those, yeah, but the game, like, when, the you, game when you Edward a Diabolos that was meant to, like, do something and reactivate the backups for, like, another Diabolos, potentially... Your opponent can just lose right there. Yep. Been there. Um, Been on the receiving end of that one. <laughs> yeah, and then if you hit the Phoenix, it's <laughs> that's like unbelievable. And there's a lot of decks playing Phoenix right now, such as Fire Ice, Fire Water, Earth Wind, Fire Earth. Just very Fire big. X is playing yeah. Phoenix. <laughs> if you're playing Fire don't. Cards, play three Phoenix. Stop. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Stop playing two Phoenix and like the Black Mage or Red Mage that gets it back. Just, just play three. <laughs> <laughs> um, the best Phoenix targets are in other colors. <laughs> <laughs> that may be true. Oh, except for Lease. I think Lease is very good. Lease is very good. Lease, I've seen some crazy blowouts where someone's in combat or whatever. They get hit to the fifth point of damage, and then the person attacks again, and they get to go Phoenix, kill something or damage something, bring back Lease, and block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blowouts. Um, but, but yeah, cards like that are also very good. Um, which my my mono ice, I <laughs> I kind of crammed Edward in at the last minute. <laughs> which me and Lopez went back and forth. I was fighting for Edward, and he was fighting against it. So did he end up playing it? No, I I ended up adjusting some cards. Oh, okay, so you just shoved it in. Yeah, I just. But he's also <laughs> playing three snow, and I think you're only playing one, right? No, I'm playing two. I right, playing two. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the cards that got cut for Edward. <laughs> oh, wait. Let, Which me, is fine. let me look at... Let me guess what you dropped. So, you dropped a Snow. I mean, I'm assuming you dropped a Scholar then. And... Mm. Oh, you just dropped Harleys? No, he didn't play Harley. Oh, he didn't play Harley either? No, no Harley, no Edward. Oh, I guess I wasn't uh, looking at his list. That's right. So. Yeah, I cut... It was. I think it was Vayne is the other one. Oh, you are just on 18 backups. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am on 18 backups. Because so, I cut a Zolaire. So you cut a forward. I oh, man. Oh, and you played three Glossia. He played two Glossia and then three versus two Zolera. That's interesting. Yeah, we kind of flip-flopped on that. He had three Sid Reigns. Oof. Yeah, so we we're still very close. Before I was on his build, and then I was looking at Edward, and I was thinking about how many Diaboloses I could cancel. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't playing any St. Alstines, which is interesting. Yeah, which I think is fine. Mono Ice usually isn't playing it right now. Uh, but speaking of St. Alstine, <laughs> there's the new spoiler St. Alstine. And, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I feel about that card. I think that card's great. <laughs> uh, I like it better in Mono Ice than anything else. Um, the Ford will, will definitely still see play, especially in like Ice Earth. Um, the Ford's just way too good. Or in Flan decks as well. Um, but having a Sid Alstine that can actually like do something else 
like outside of like break a forward like during a super situational thing um it's pretty good and of course it's an ex burst so that's super relevant yeah of um, course like seems pretty good because yeah well it's two cards or less you don't free something no cards break yeah or three cp mm-hmm. the experts seems good yeah seems pretty insane <laughs> like if the, name, that, the, if, the name is the only thing like i was like, gonna say yeah. if that card had any like, other name yeah. it wouldn't be okay like it, <laughs> it's like i think any other name is safe like unless it's maybe sephiroth if it was like a sephiroth backup that did that then maybe you don't play it Oh yeah, then it's, it doesn't make the cut at all. <laughs> uh, but like, but should also you've been seeing a lot less play, especially in Mono Ice, since we've mostly cut the Flan package. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I say we, I just mean me and Lopez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the only two Ice players that matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not to be like rude, but like I feel like we play this deck every single day, like all the time. So usually, if I have anything about Ice, that I just go to him, and we can. We usually argue about it, but usually can decide on some some similar stand. Uh, but yeah, I like the Sid Alstein. I like it. It's much better in Mono Ice. Um, but yeah, seems like a pretty sweet card. And then, of course, we have the new Laguna coming out. I'll say, hey, oh my god, is Cody getting excited about Opus 9 cards? <laughs> just, just the Ice ones. Yeah. Just the ice ones of course, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of cards in Opus 9 that have the same name as cards that are already pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's definitely like, cards that you can tweak and make like kind of alternate builds of decks that may or may not be better. We'll have to see. Like, I find you know, it strange like, that one of the decent like typo cards that came out is named Ace. Or Cadet cards is named Ace. Yeah. So, but you yeah, obviously want to play the light Ace if you're playing Cadets because it, it's your method of playing two free thing or a free card and then getting a card mm-hmm. back it's your wall so yeah and things things like the new idea like <clears throat> the name instantly like set the card back which sucks um but maybe that's good maybe it's good that we don't have like huge changes we don't want like another maybe Opus they're gonna to rotate oh. <laughs> oh god please no <laughs> <laughs> um no i don't i don't see that happening anytime soon um Hopefully not. But yeah, the set's starting to get more interesting. Like, it's weird, because, like, sometimes the commons and uncommons... Like, while I I do agree that, like, we haven't gotten all the interesting cards because they're all the cards that people who, like, content creators get to put out and other players, mm-hmm. uh, the commons and uncommons, or rares, sorry, are still generally some of the most important cards. Like, heroes, I think, are, like, the most important. Legends, sadly, aren't always. Like, there's maybe... a a handful of legends that are relevant and then the uh commons sometimes are just busted like I, like i said last podcast the shadow mm-hmm. thinking good things about that card yeah and i think i know i'm looking here that laguna is a common and i believe the new sid Alstein is also a common yeah like those that power like Push. there is no besides legends there is no power to rarity correlation like yeah it seems seems that way like legends oh. typically okay they do something kind of above and beyond but like heroes and rares and like uh, no <laughs> yeah um over time but... yeah we see a lot more legends in decks like if you look at your ice deck you have uh lock celeste genesis vane <laughs> kuja orphan sephiroth are all legends <laughs> so like yeah. over half of your name forwards okay yeah they're they're legends but in terms yeah, of the singular just... set it's not always the case yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm excited to see. I know there's a new lock that's coming out with like the Dissidia art, so maybe we'll see uh, another lock or a lock that actually sees play. I know they came out with one in like Opus Six that mm-hmm. uh, nobody has any oh, idea. Oh man, what that, that first lock is from <laughs> Opus Four. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if like does not feel like that. Oh, wow. It'll be interesting to see if like a big named card gets like dethroned. Like, it, like, by itself. Like, Sid Alstein getting... Genesis? Like, re- replacing Sid Alstein. Oh, that's not happening, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's happening? Is Unless that it's, possible? like, a forward drop 8k that does the same effect or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just something ridiculous. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to the set. Seeing the meta change without Dataluma will be nice. Yeah, it'll be definitely interesting. I think, obviously, Earthwind is still going to exist in some form. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which direction that goes. 
touched on last oh, yeah. time could be like maybe a standard unit package probably not the way i was saying that's a little greedy but uh, <laughs> there are there are those like chocobo kind of shells and other things like that uh, there's also a lot of good just like hate standard units kind of like ranger breaks monsters and things like that so and they'll yeah, still have all their colors so they can still play you know crazy greedy phoenix decks <laughs> yeah, just make sure you play adele uh, as we saw this weekend that card wins games so <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> But I think that's it for this week. I just want to talk about kind of Kansas, touch on a little bit. Um, and then uh, next week we'll probably go over whether I have to try or cry when it comes to nationals. So. <laughs> next week we'll talk about Zach and his winning LQ experience. Yes, That'll... that will be the topic for next week. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it for this week. Uh, I've been Zach Burrell. I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuck and Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chocobros to get 10% off your next order.